Jose, everybody. Recently, I had the opportunity to catch up with my old high school ROP teacher. He's the one who taught me how to do CPR as well as emergency disaster preparation. Before becoming a teacher, however, he was a paramedic for several years. He's telling me a story about how one of his old unit leaders had this very touching story and a story that made him reflect back. One day when he was grocery shopping for his family, like any other person would do after a long shift, he saw a boy, he was walking through the snack aisle, he saw a young boy on the floor convulsing. He was a paramedic at the time, his instinct kicked in and went right to work. He started doing CPR on the child. Luckily, paramedics arrived quickly and he was able to get transported to the hospital right on time. He followed the board of the hospital to check up that everything was fine and the doctors told the unit leader of my old teacher that if it weren't for him coming at that exact moment, the child would have perished. He went on to continue his life for the next several years. One day he heard back from this child. He wrote him a really sincere letter and it turns out that that child that he saved 20 years back in the snack aisle of a Walmart, or I don't remember what grocery store it was, graduated top of his class in med school. Because of that, because of that instant, because of that instantaneous response, the child will go on to save several lives. Knowing CPR in the right moment is the difference between life and death for many individuals. Now, in a journal, in a journal and article published by the Journal of the American Medical Association in October of 2013. A study performed in Denmark found that as the number of bystander CPR increased, people, people that had uh, heart attacks, strokes, whatever, after 30 days, more than tripled their survival rates. And among people per 100,000 lifelong survivors, not just after 30 days, but went on to live the rest of their lives, more than doubled. But before you go on and beating on everyone's chest and trying to save their lives for no reason, I'm going to show you how to properly do these things. First, we have to identify that the victim actually needs CPR because if they don't, you can actually hurt them. Second, if they do, I'm going to teach you how to properly beat their chest for them and how to properly breathe for them. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to use an uh, external automated defibrillator or an AED and this will greatly increase the chances of restarting the heart and their recovery. Now first, before you go on to performing CPR or identifying, you want to make sure this scene is safe. You never know what situation you're going to be, whether it is at a grocery store or in a case of a disaster. So you want to check your surroundings, make sure the ceiling is safe, the ground is safe for you to proceed. Because if it's not and you get injured, now there's two people on the floor that need help instead of just one. First of all, you want to make sure the person is conscious or unconscious. You want to slap them around a little bit, not too hard now. We want to make sure they're conscious. You want to say their name, sir, sir, are you okay? If they don't respond, you want to make sure for several things. Check to see if they're breathing. Now, this could include their chest rising. You can feel under their nose, see if air is coming out. Or you can, and you can feel for their heart, or you can check several pulse points. My favorite would be right here under the neck. Some people prefer the radial spot, which is right under the thumb. Always use these two fingers, by the way. Or I like to use the subclavicle arteries right under the arm. Now, if you notice that they do need CPR and they need immediate help, it's time to act now. The first thing you want to do is you're going to want to locate the xiphoid process in the chest. Now this is the point where your two ribs come together and it's the spot right here in your chest. You want to take the heel of your palm and apply it directly there. Now this part of the process is up to personal choice. I like to put my hand right here on my wrist. Other people like to interlock their fingers, put it right over their hand, whichever you prefer. When you have it here, you're going to push down two inches into the chest. At this point, you're going to hear bones cracking, you're going to hear ribs breaking. That's totally normal. It happens all the time. If you do hear that, don't stop. It happens all the time. You're going to push two inches deep at 100 beats per minute. Now, most people don't know what 100 beats per minute, but there is a trick to learning this really easily. And it comes with in the form of the most ironic and well-suited song for this kind of situation like this. It's Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. So you want to put, put your hand here. Uh, uh, uh. You're gonna to want to do that for 30 times. So while you're singing in your head, you're gonna to have to count to 30. After you reach the 30, the 30 mark, you're gonna to want to give breaths to this individual. Before you start, you're gonna to have to align their airway properly because if not, you're gonna start blowing air into their stomachs and that could lead to a bunch of other problems. 
You want to align them first. You're going to tilt the head back. Use two fingers. Lift the chin. And squeeze their nose because the air can come out of their nose. And open the mouth slightly. When you breathe in, you're going to give two breaths, full and slow. And you're going to look for the air to, the air to rise, or the chest to rise, I'm sorry. And you're going to have to slowly wait for it to come down. Do it slowly, because again, if you do it too fast, you can go to their stomach, and it will cause a lot more problems. You're going to want to repeat that for several minutes, as long as it takes, for either an AED to arrive or emergency services to arrive. Now, this, is, this here is an AED. It's a little bit older, and it's just a training AED. But the same, same applies to a real one. You're going to turn it on. There's always going to be a power switch here. This is a training device only. No shock will be delivered. And it's just this one's just letting you know it's a training. From there, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it off and guide you guys through it because it's really loud and it's just going to speak forever. You're going to want to connect the power cord to the actual device here. And there's going to be two pads. And each pad is going to indicate where they're going to go. For this one, you're going to put it right over the, the right side of the chest and on the lower left side. You're going to apply it there. You're going to clear the area. So if there's any bystanders around, you're going to want them to step about 10 feet back to avoid any electrical shock to them. You're going to put it there. The AED is going to read the vitals, and it's going to advise you on what to do next. Either to press the shock button or to stop and continue to give compressions depending on the patient's vitals. You're going to press the shock button and there's going to be a very clear shock button and then it's going to read again and it's going to tell you continue CPR or stop. If it tells you to continue, you're going to want to continue giving CPR, which is chest compressions, for 30 times in breaths until paramedics arrive. At that point, once paramedics arrive, they're going to take over and you've done your job. Now I've gone over how to, give, how to identify if the person is really in need of CPR how to give CPR properly so you don't injure the patient, and how to use an AED properly. So next time, if, you, if you're one day going into a grocery store and you see a kid dying on the floor, you're going to know what to do, and don't be afraid to hesitate to save that kid's life.